So here's a look at the uh, bunk that I'm going to fit the hypervent into. Um, here's a look at the material before I cut it. it comes in these rolls. I believe it's uh, 30, I think it was 34 inches wide or 33 inches wide. And um, this should be enough to get both bunks done. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so let's take a look. The hypervent is all cut and fit. Got it going up the sides and in the back. That way when the mattress is in, it should still breathe around the sides. Here's a good look at the entrance to the bunk. You can see that the uh, hypervent down there creates about a three quarter of an inch, almost an inch gap, um, supposedly where the air can still move around the uh, mattress. So from everything I've seen online, at the very least, it'll be a big improvement over what we were currently doing, which was really nothing. Um, this is the rear bunk in the uh, Jayco X23B, the one nearest to the bathroom. But uh, so that's, I mean, that's what it is. It's all in. Still got the other bunk to do. But um, overall, it wasn't too bad. Probably took about uh, 45 minutes to cut it and tape it together. Um, and now I guess we'll just wait and see what happens next time we get a rainy uh, and or real humid day. So today, along with tackling some uh, condensation issues, we're going to install this Max Air ventilation cover. We're going to put this over the uh, bathroom exhaust fan on the trailer. That way when it's raining out, we can leave that fan open. Uh, also, if it's open and it starts raining, we don't have to worry about water getting in the trailer. So we're going to give that a try, see how it goes along with the uh, installation of the uh, moisture control material. So you can see here the uh, pop-up gizmo is in. Um, it's a pretty simple process to install. I did put some Velcro up high just underneath the uh, rain gutter and uh, below we have the reflectix in the window 
And of course the pop-up gizmo, which is strapped on the top. Um, the added benefits here, of course, are twofold. One, we get uh, we get we get the reflection of all the solar heat uh, in the bunk ends themselves. You can see we're kind of a tight fit, but we do make it with the other bunk open on the other side. We just max out the width of the uh, property between the garage and the fence line. Uh, but in any regard, so the pop-up gizmo and then the uh, reflectix in those windows on both of these bunks made a big difference. Uh, like I said earlier, not only is it because of the solar gain and all that extra heat you would have, if you didn't have those products, um, we've learned also it's helped control our humidity. Uh, it creates an air gap between the canvas tent and the reflectix and the pop-up gizmo materials itself. Uh, that air gap then is just another layer of insulation. It actually allows the trailer to stay cooler uh, by reflecting all the sunlight uh, at nighttime uh, and in the mornings. It also keeps it quite dark in the sleeping bunks, which is a huge benefit. So I just wanted to create a little summary of what we've been doing here in our efforts to control moisture and condensation in our hybrid trailer. It, uh, in most cases, would apply to any traditional RV, Class A, Class C, Class B, and even fifth wheel. Um, all of us, at one point or another, deal with condensation either on our windows, on the interior, uh, and on some occasions even in our bunk areas. But specifically the hybrids, they tend to have a lot of moisture issues, certainly in the tented areas, just due to the fact that the only thing separating you from the outside is that canvas tent plus the plywood bunk or the bottom of your bed is literally exposed to the elements and the only thing there separating your mattress from outside is a piece of I believe it's three quarter inch plywood or certainly five eighths plywood so I just want to go down a short list of some of the things that we've done to help control moisture and to uh, I guess Sojourn Goldens we've got dogs uh, so let me go down my short list and uh, I'll show you a few of the products that we have at the end of the video down in the descriptions I'll put links uh, Mattress Insider has uh, offered a 5% discount to anybody who uses the link that I'll provide uh, for any purchase that purchases that you would make uh, they didn't put a time limit on it so if you're not ready to make a purchase or if you're still in consideration just copy the link and save it somewhere. You can always go back and use it uh, later on. So one of the projects that we took on was we installed a, a Max Air vent cover over our bathroom exhaust fan. One of the problems we had in the past was not being able to let that fan run at night or always being worried about it being left open, especially if there was rain in a forecast. Without a cover, in this case a Max Air vent cover, uh, rain could always get in through that bathroom exhaust fan if it were left open. So by putting this Max Air vent cover over the top of the fan, uh, it's now allowing us to run that fan at night if we need to. Uh, getting rid of moisture and condensation in your trailer is all about moving air. And uh, this is why the Hypervent product is so useful because it allows that air gap underneath your mattress. You're, we're using a, uh, let me just grab it real quick. We're using this, this dehumidifier. It's a small little dehumidifier. It holds, it can collect up to uh, uh, 10 ounces of water a day from the trailer. It actually is good for, I believe it was uh, 254 square feet of room space, which is certainly more than we have anyway. And um, uh, it has the capacity of up to 25 ounces, which basically is a two day run or two and a half day run. Uh, we tend to run it almost all the time. If the air conditioner is running, uh, of course, we don't need it then because the air conditioner is doing its its own job at removing uh, condensation and moisture from the air as it's running. But if we're not in an AC type mode and maybe more towards heating, then uh, without question, we'll try to run that uh, dehumidifier. And uh, it's really made quite a drastic difference in, in the amount of moisture in the trailer. Um, one of the other things we've learned early on is use an electric space heater. Uh, if you can, if you're hooked up to a 30 amp or 50 amp service, there really isn't any reason for you to burn your propane. Uh, propane does introduce some moisture into the air. I think there's a lot of debate as to how much, but
but there is certainly a component of that. I mean, we've run our our propane heater and, and it works great, uh, but we have always found that uh, the windows inside the trailer uh, are wet, uh, far more so than if we're running our space heater. Now, everybody, I think, or most of us are pretty familiar with these ceramic cube heaters. These things are great. They, uh, they're not that loud. They produce a lot of heat. And again, if you're on shore power anyway, um, you're paying for the electricity when you pay for your daily fee or your weekly fee. And if it's not that cold out, and, and to be honest with the, again, with the added benefit of having the uh, pop-up gizmos, uh, that ceramic heater alone can pretty much heat our entire RV without any problem at all. In fact, it, it often cycles off for 15 or 20 minutes at a time. But of course, it's all dependent upon temperature, but it does a great job. So we try to stay off of the propane furnace uh, as often as we can, and we rely mostly on that. Uh, certainly be careful where you put it. We keep ours on our main kitchen counter so that there's no opportunity for anything to get in front of it, anything to flammable. Uh, it also keeps it out of the way of the dogs, uh, but it does a tremendous job, and it's also an added benefit to controlling condensation. The other things to consider uh, cooking in your RV, uh, most of us have already figured this out, but whenever you've got your stovetop working, not only are you burning propane, which again we've already talked about, can introduce moisture into the air, um, you've got, I'm pretty sure every trailer has an exhaust fan above it, certainly ours has, use that exhaust fan whenever you're cooking in your RV, uh, and also make sure that you've unlocked the uh, exterior side of the vent for that uh, overhead exhaust fan because if it's still in travel mode which is locked uh, the vents not doing any good it's just going to recirculate the moist air uh, it's certainly not going to remove any smoke from your trailer uh, but it's it, it is important that you be aware that uh, it could possibly be locked it should be locked if you're traveling uh, but it's it's equally as important to unlock it if you're using your stovetop believe that covers everything that I wanted to talk about with regards to how to control moisture and condensation not only in your hybrid for us our Jayco X23B but for any other RV that's out there on the road who is at one time or another uh, dealing with condensation and moisture so from that end I'll say goodbye and uh, we'll see you here in another week uh, we've got a couple more modifications to make and just a few more topics looks like we have a camping trip, first camping trip of the season coming up, uh, quite possibly for Father's Day. We're still working on the logistics of that, but uh, we might be actually heading up north for a bit. So uh, until then, we'll uh, like to thank you for checking in with us, and we'll talk to you soon.